This is a model of the uh, gastrointestinal tract, the GI tract, and it shows four regions, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, and the colon. Now food, when it first enters the mouth, is going to be uh, masticated by your teeth, broken into smaller pieces, which uh, gives it increased surface area. In your mouth, you have a salivary amylase to break down carbohydrates, start breaking them down, and a lipase. Uh, also, a lot of mucus and serous fluids, uh, and the food is made into what we call a bolus. Uh, and then it goes to the pharynx and then to the esophagus. In the esophagus, we don't have any new digestion um, or absorption. Uh, basically, the esophagus is a long tube to get you past the thoracic cavity to the stomach. Now, from the mouth through the esophagus, the type of epithelium we have in this top layer is called stratified squamous, and it's good for whether, where you have wear and tear, and the food is still pretty chunky here. Now, underneath the epithelium, we have the uh, lamina propria and then a, a layer of muscularis mucosae. Underneath that, we have the submucosa, where we have lots of glands secreting um, various enzymes or mucus. Um, and that's called the submucosal uh, area, and that has the submucosal plexus controlling the gland secretion. Uh, the, the deeper layer is the muscularis, and the muscularis has, through most of the GI tract, two layers of muscle, an inner circular layer and an outer longitudinal layer. The inner circular layer would contract and push that bolus along. The longitudinal layer contracts and shortens the tube. Now, the esophagus has two sphincters, one letting food in and one letting food out. And then we get to pass the diaphragm. There's a hole in the diaphragm called the esophageal hiatus, so that the uh, esophagus can get through to the stomach. In the stomach, uh, the stomach's a very hostile environment. It has a very low pH, under 2, uh, and we have pepsinogen being secreted by the cells, which is converted to pepsin in the presence of hydrochloric acid. Now, uh, it's the chief cells that secrete uh, pepsinogen. This is the inactive form of pepsin. Pepsin, when it's activated, will digest proteins. A lot of the stomach is protein, so we have to be careful about not digesting the stomach. Uh, the parietal cells secrete hydrochloric acid, and also something called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is important for the absorption of um, vitamin uh, B12 in the uh, small intestine. And B12 is important for uh, making uh, red blood cells. And if you don't have intrinsic factor, if your part of your stomach's removed, then you might wind up with something called pernicious anemia. Now, the stomach, uh, is protected against digesting itself by a thick layer of mucus. Also, we have tight junctions between the cells to prevent any leaks, and a rapid turnover of the cells uh, about every three days. And as I mentioned before, uh, the inactive form of pepsinogen is, is secreted and becomes activated in the stomach to pepsin. Also, we have uh, uh, endocrine cells here releasing something called uh, gastrin that promotes all the activities of the stomach. Now the stomach is mainly uh, a storage place where we might store food for about two to six hours. It's going to go from being a bolus above the stomach into what we call chyme, a creamy mixture. Uh, after, uh, depending on what you eat, have you eaten and your emotional states, then the food will leave the stomach through the pyloric sphincter. Now the stomach is different histologically because we go from being stratified squamous to simple columnar. It will stay simple columnar tissue all the way through the rest of the GI tract until we get to the anus where it goes back to being stratified squamous tissue again. Uh, there's another difference in the stomach. We also have what's called 